A picture is worth a thousand words on this edition of the Seaco Sports Forum. Sherm Chester, along with Sam Bruno on this edition of the Seaco Sports Forum, we have a special guest, KJ Cardinal. And uh, KJ, uh, he's got two businesses we're going to be talking about today, but we're going to start off, KJ, with Ball 603. And tell us, tell us, we, we met, let me set it up. We met at Blundholm Gymnasium for the NHIAA Division One and Two Basketball Championships. And uh, we were sitting side by side at the scores table and uh, or I guess we called it the uh, talent table. <laughs> and uh, anyway, <laughs> so we, we, we got to talk and I got to see some of your product and uh, uh, explain to the folks what, what Ball 603 is. Yeah, no, first off, thanks for having me, Sherm. I appreciate you um, just supporting local sports in general. I think that's you know what we're trying to do too. So I think it's great exactly what you guys are doing as well. Um, but yeah, Ball 603, um, I had the idea a couple of years ago, um, I actually, you know, purchased the domain name and um, created the logo and things back in 2019. Uh, and then this year, we just kind of decided to push play on it. Um, we're really just covering sports, um, uh, basketball rather in New Hampshire. And our, our focus mostly is visual storytelling. Um, you know, I think we're doing that with with photos and graphics in video highlights, um, and it's been really well received so far. Um, but yeah, we're just trying to get the stories out there and provide more coverage. Um, that's really just what I felt was just, you know, lacking a little bit of coverage for um, everyone around the state. So we're trying to kind of fill some of that void. Well, I'll tell you, I, I watched uh, the some of the video coverage uh, that you put together of, of the different games, and uh, wow, man, they, you guys did some great work. And, and the, the uh, shots, the action shots, those those you know like i said are worth a thousand words um I, I, explain to me how how do you develop that skill to be able to pick up that shot especially in a crucial moment in a game when the guy is putting up or the gal is putting up that three-pointer that's going to win it for the team <laughs> how yeah is that? I, I think i think a lot of it is just you know knowing the sport you know i also i'm also a youth coach and a junior high coach uh in my hometown here of farmington and um, just knowing basketball, you can anticipate things. Um, growing up, I was a pretty good video game player. I think that that, that always plays in the, you know, the hand-eye coordination type of stuff. Um, but it's really anticipation. You know, if I went and shot a field hockey game, I don't think I would have the same results with some of the photos and things um, that I take. And then uh, on the video side of things, um, almost all the video that people are seeing on our site is, uh, is being shot by Tim Lee. Uh, who obviously knows basketball well. He was a 2,000-point scorer in the state. Um, so, you know, I think that us having kind of an eye and a knack for what's going on on the court I think really helps. And, um, yeah, we have some good equipment and um, a lot of practice. <laughs> yeah, so you, you really have uh, – you've, you've done the practicing. you got it down to a science, literally. Sam? KJ, uh, Sam Bruno here. Uh, again, we talked at the, uh, the tournament the other night. Um, one of the things uh, – Again, Sherman and I, uh, we don't we don't say that we're 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 seniors, but we're veterans. Okay, uh, veterans, veterans, yeah, veterans, veterans, I like that. veterans of the high school basketball scene. I like that. <laughs> and uh, you know, we would always get all our content from newspapers and uh, the radio, and uh, lately, then going to television. But now, uh, the younger crowd, uh, parents. Um, they are looking at Facebook. They're looking at Twitter. They're looking at Instagram. Um, uh, how are you using uh, social media as part of your 603 basketball program? Yeah, I mean, that's really what the focus is for us. Um, you know, that we're using all those social media entities that are out there and available to just reach the audience. I think it's the fastest, easiest, most inexpensive way to kind of get your message out there. Um, in all honesty, anybody can do it. You know, it, it, it's uh, great to have those platforms that you can showcase uh, your work that you put time into. Um, but I am, a, I'm a journalism major. Uh, I went to Northeastern University, um, uh, graduated there. And 
you know, print does mean a lot to me. Um, we just decided that we're going to be uh, launching a new magazine. Um, and I think that there is something to be said about having an actual printed copy of anything in your hands. Um, but I just feel that like the, the instant gratification that, you know, people are really looking for these days that social media offers kind of makes newspapers and print somewhat obsolete as far as getting the immediate news that you want to mm -hmm. get, um, like a score, you know, it's different, you know, that, that people are along that way. I mean, you can watch games live now all over the state. Um, so it's kind of taken out, you know, I remember as, you know, growing up in, in Farmington and, you know, getting the newspaper and, you know, couldn't wait to read a Mike Whaley column and read the sports roundup that he'd have in the Fosters and things like that. And, um, it's just not something that people need, um, currently just because of the nature of social media. Mm. Talk about that, that magazine. You brought up uh, the magazine that you guys are putting together and the, this first issue is focusing on the tournament, correct? Yes. Yep. So basically the... As of right now, it's currently going to be an annual magazine um, that in we're calling it the season with hopes that it can grow. Um, but the, the thought is right now is it's going to recap the 2021 22 season, um, really focusing on the champions, um, Mike Whaley and myself and perhaps a few other uh, staff uh, are going to be writing articles that will be featured in there, along with lots of photos and graphics and um, the thought behind it really is, is just a way to kind of commemorate uh, the champions that there are so that we're going to be able to showcase those stories and have a keepsake. Um, you know, we're launching that along with a, a new web store um, that's also going to have some championship apparel um, and things along those lines. And it, again, it's just something that's not currently offered in the space. Um, you know, you see it collegiately, you see it, you know, professionally, obviously. Um, and I just feel like that, you know, when when the uh, Patriots win the Super Bowl, you see the Sports Illustrated commercial, and hey, it's get your hat and get your magazine, mm -hmm. right? You know, it, it's like why why not do the same thing? You know, I feel that the student athletes really need to be put on a pedestal, um, and quite frankly, I enjoy high school sports more than professional sports, um, and I think that communities, you know, really, I don't know, really respond well to that type of thing. So I think it's the idea of kind of putting them on a pedestal and. And everything that we do um, is professional. I think that that's a, that's a big thing too, is, is that um, quality is like a huge thing for us. Um, you know, we have contributors around the state that are sending us some content to put on the site and um, you can ask them, I'm pretty picky about it. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that that's just basically, uh, you know, trying to control, kind of kind of control what we do as far as putting out a good quality product and not right. just putting out anything. So. Um, so along those lines, the magazine's going to be the same. It's going to be a real high quality um, production and publication. And I think that, uh, you know, from just from the cover that people have seen, the response has been great so far. Excellent. Well, you now you said that you have, uh, uh, you know, and you and I talked about this over at Lundholm, a lot of parents are taking photos of their son or daughter in whatever the sport it is. Uh, a lot of video too, in hopes of making a, a reel up for colleges uh, you know, they, they obviously are trying their best and a lot of them invest in some high tech cameras for most of them are phones, the phone cameras now, which most of us are using. Um, but <laughs> this is where you also can be a help to them because you folks do the photos, the, the reels, the uh, action shots. And uh, again, there's a service they can turn to you if they want to. Yeah, I mean, basically, we're providing the coverage, but we're, we're trying to position ourselves as a news organization, um, you know, that we're providing the footage. And in year one, in all honesty, we didn't even really try to monetize anything we were doing. Mm -hmm. uh, we we're just trying to kind of get our brand out there and get people to um, appreciate the coverage that we were providing. Um, and I think that our long term plan is to stay in that lane as a news organization. Um, throughout the season, we've had countless, you know, I mean, honestly, probably 50 to 100 uh, folks reach out to us trying to get us to hire us to do production work or to cover their game. Um, but that's really not kind of the avenue that we're going in as a news organization. You know, it's not like you're, you're not really calling WMUR and saying, hey, come color, cover my basketball game tonight. You know, like they, they try to go with the stories, you know, so right. um, it, we're a little different in that sense that we're trying to kind of spread the wealth around the state and give coverage to um more schools uh this year we covered we covered 78 of the 88 um wow. nhia schools wow um so i mean and, and you know the, the other 10 were sorry we tried to um the shortened d1 d2 schedule made made things very difficult 
Um, but we're hoping that uh, next year we can kind of get out to everyone. And those those ten that we missed are on the top of our list, so we'll definitely be getting there as soon as we can. There you go. There you go. So is it okay. just okay? Go ahead, Sam. Did you have something? Uh, yeah, I would. I just wanted to ask KJ. Um, you know, you, you you mentioned all the schools that you've gone to uh, this past season and uh, and visited. I just wanted to ask you what some of your favorite venues are oh, uh, to question. shoot in, and you can't say Farmington, and you can't <laughs> say, you can't say Exeter because this is an Exeter based show. Okay. Okay. Great. <laughs> Well, I, I haven't been to Stevens, but everyone raves about that. So that's on the top of our list for next year. Uh, definitely got to get out there for that one. Um, but I could answer these in multiple ways. I could answer these in, you know, who has the best lighting, <laughs> you know, as a photographer, you love going in and seeing some nicely well lit place. Um, I really, I really love shooting in at Dairy Field because of the lighting there is great. Um, other schools are, are, are improving their lighting all around the state too. Um, but yeah, no, I love that. I mean, Trinity is a tough place to shoot. Um, a weird place to shoot, but a really cool setting. Um, you know, they have these columns that are on the sidelines and the fans are in on top of the game. Um, I went up to Woodsville. Uh, amazing. It reminds me, uh, I know I can't say Farmington, but it reminds me of the old den in Farmington where the, where we used to play growing up mm -hmm. and, um, you know, the, it's packed in there. It's hot in there. The, uh, fans are right on top of the court. It's the old wooden bleachers. Um, you know, in, in those things. So, I mean, it's different professionally. Yeah. I like some of the places with better light, but um, just as a fan of the game, I, I like those band boxes when you're right on top of the action and it's loud and where the, where the kids run them. into the stage, right? They just, they, they, there's padding against the stage. <laughs> yeah, like exactly. The old, like the old new market high gym or Talbot gymnasium. <laughs> next, yeah, next okay. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All those, all those small <laughs> facilities like that. I, I kind of get a kick out of those. And, and honestly, I mean, I'm a, I'm a D4 well, Class M originally, Farmington guy, but now we're there at D4. So um, that's another thing we're doing is we're just really showcasing a lot of the little guys. Um, you know, we'll go, to a, we'll go to a Trinity or a Pinkerton game or an Exeter game or something, and, you know, there will be other coverage there. You know, so um, there are people that are shooting video and photos and writing stories. But, you know, if you go to some of the D3 and D4 schools, there's really nothing, you know, so... Um, and that honestly is a huge reason why um, I felt the need for something like a ball 603 to provide that coverage. Um, we're still doing lots of D1 and D2 stuff. Um, it's great basketball and, and those stories need to be told too. But just being able to have uh, coverage for the D4s, I've had so many coaches and families reach out to us that are very thankful because there's really not much else going out there. And do you uh, ever see yourself branching into the other sports like spring sports and, and hockey and in the winter? Or I mean, we've talked about it a little bit. Um, not not any time in the near future. Um, we've had a lot of people ask that, like, are you doing baseball? Are you doing football? Um, I mean, we are called ball for a reason, you know, that there would be the potential to grow there right. um, with some of that stuff. Uh, but really, at this point, it's ball 603 is a passion move for us. You know, it's it's what we love. We love basketball more than anything. Um, and I think that we have, we have a lot of plans that nobody knows about yet, um, <laughs> that we're just kind of waiting, um, you know, to kind of integrate and, and release throughout, throughout the off season even, and just do some new things, you know, like no one had any idea that the magazine was coming. Um, you know, no one has any idea about the web store. Um, and we have other things planned for the summer and into the fall that are all basketball related as well. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I, I like I say, I saw your workmanship, uh, both at at Lundholm uh, during the tournament and then uh, after the fact, and uh, I'll tell you if, if uh, again they go to ball six zero three dot com and and get a sample of of that work. Uh, now you guys also are involved with the Pack Network, is that so? Yeah, so the Pack Network is um is really like what's powering this at this point right now. You know that that um that's uh, my business with uh, Adam Polgreen. Um, we started that fifteen years ago. And what we do with PAC Network is we do live event production predominantly now and uh, mostly in the college athletics sp uh, space. So um, like we just did the Northeast Conference, you know, women's basketball semifinals um, that were those were ESPN productions. Um, and that's kind of more of the higher end live stuff. And um, during the, the bash, which is the, the Mike Lee um, holiday basketball bash is the Christmas tournament in Farmington now. And, you know, we, we showcase some of our live productions during that um, just to kind of show people what we can do. 
Um, there are a lot of folks that are in that space already that are doing um, a lot of those things. And, you know, there are some groups that are doing a great job with them. Um, the Friday Night Lights crew, for instance, like their, their stuff is awesome. I think that all the productions yes. that they're doing, um, you know, and, and the sports page coverage is great. And, you know, we're just not necessarily against going into that by any means because we do offer live streaming for, for stuff. Um, but it's just not kind of where we're going. Um, and that's really more of the pack network side of things. Um, whereas Ball 603 is really just focused on, um, like I said, the visual storytelling, but not with the live element. Right, right. And, yeah. and doing doing one thing and doing it right. <laughs> That's important. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, we're, we are looking for, you know, we are looking for partnered schools that are interested in streaming. You know, we have a very basic um, solution that we're offering for high schools, um, you know, that can have a scoreboard on the screen and that, you know, my 11 year old son can run, you know, so it's a very basic setup um, that, that, you know, schools could choose us as a partner, for instance. Um, but yeah, we're, we're just kind of navigating that a little slowly, honestly, because it's not really the, the main focus of what we're doing. Now, if I ever hit the mega bucks or Powerball, I've said it and, and I've talked to our producer, Bob Glowacki, about it. Uh, we're going to have a, a Seacoast Sports Forum network down here. So we cover, well, we've got some good teams down here between Exeter, Portsmouth, Winnicott, Dover, and uh, probably somebody out here. But that, those teams alone, and it doesn't matter what sport you get, you get some good contests going on week to week. So all great contests some great rivalries that are built yeah. into those places. And um, no, for sure. I mean, the uh, that's, that's another thing too, is, is just, just kind of getting on the scene with some of these local schools that, you know, I've worked in the college athletic space prior to PAC network and then with PAC network for 15 years. So close to 20 years now, I've been more focused on college um, so it's been really great to get back into the high school scene with a lot of this stuff um, and just seeing some of the, the rivalries and, you know, meeting people like you guys, you know, just people that are passionate about what they're doing. Um, you know, I think that, that the, it, the kids and families appreciate it more, maybe even in college athletics, just because they kind of expect it. Um, mm -hmm. So I think it's more rewarding um, doing some of the stuff that we're doing. Uh, but, yeah, some of those rivalries, you know, make it all the fun that you can have. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, like I say, I keep trying to win that mega or power, but eh, one of these days. <laughs> hey, before we before we go any further, I wanted to ask you, since we, we've concluded the schoolboy and schoolgirl March Madness uh, uh, here in the state, the national scene is going on, the NCAA. Uh, have you picked your bracket yet? <laughs> I actually haven't picked my bracket. Um, I, I need to. I, I, I run a pool myself, <laughs> but I, I don't. Um, I, I haven't picked it yet. Um, early in the season, before the season started, before they were ranked, um, I, I really liked and picked Auburn to win. So, um, not just because they're the Tigers, but because I think yeah, they're I'm just going to say that. Come on, you're a Tiger guy <laughs> through and through, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but that had nothing to do with the mascot. I'm not one of the mascot pickers, but but I I, uh, I do like them. Um, but no, I, I mean honestly, you can ask any of my family and friends. It's like a national holiday in my house uh, for the for March Madness. Uh, nothing I love more than that um, tournament. I just think it's the greatest thing going, you know, and, and I always root for the underdog, you know, I just that that mindset in general. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. But no, I haven't. I haven't. Have you guys done yours yet? I, I, I need. Some yeah. Help. Oh, yeah. Wait, Sam, just give him the thumbnail of yours. <laughs> well, we, we, yeah, we, we did a show. We did a show with Roger Brown uh, recently and we did all kinds of picks and things like that. And and as I say to as I say to people, um, the way to pick your bracket is to go from the inside out. Don't go from the outside in. <laughs> yeah. uh, pick, your favorite, pick your favorite teams first and then stick with them. And so uh, in the West, I've got Gonzaga and Texas Tech. In the East, I've got UCLA and Kentucky. In the South, I've got Arizona and Villanova. And in the Midwest, I've got Iowa and Wisconsin. So I'm sorry, but no Auburn Tigers making it to the, to the Elite tough. Eight. <laughs> if they make it to the final four, I'll be happy. That's what I'm looking there for. There you go. There you go. I, I took you play, the, go ahead. Did you play yeah. ball for Farmington, KJ? No, I did not. No. No, I you grew did. up. I played I played all the way up until uh, up until high school and I didn't play in high school. Um, but I did I did graduate with Tim Lee. Um and Tim and I are Tim and I are best friends. We've been best friends since uh -oh. we were probably seven or eight years old. <laughs> Does, and, um, does he like the, the term legend? Uh, you know, when he is kind of a New Hampshire legend. Right. He is. He is. And uh, yeah, you know, growing up in, in our town with uh, Mike Lee was our principal and the coach, you know, and um, it was just a crazy experience. You know, I think that's where I get a lot of the passion um, for basketball in general is I think that anyone that grew up in Farmington in the 80s and 90s, 
just has this passion for basketball because it was such an amazing time. It's something that will never be replicated, even though all of us involved try, or do our best to try to replicate it. It, it won't be replicated, but uh, it gives that passion that that uh, all stemmed from that. And, um, you know, nothing in my life I've loved more than watching Tim compete at anything. He's one of the hardest working people um, at everything that he does. So to have him involved with us on Ball 603 has been great. In following high school basketball in the 80s and 90s, which I was involved with pretty significantly, um, you know, I followed Portsmouth High with James Best. Um, we always kind of joke with Exeter High School coach Jeff Holmes. Uh, and I say to him that when he was playing for Keene High School, he was the best three-point shooter that I've ever seen uh, in that situation. And then certainly watching Conquer with Matt Bonner and uh, players like that. I mean, uh, guys that just stick out in New Hampshire. And, and the Lee family in Farmington, like I said, is a, is, is, is a legend uh, around here. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, that uh, you're still very close with all of them. You know, Josh, Josh Lee is the assistant coach at Brewster, you know, so we know what they've been doing as well. So, no, it's a, it's a great basketball family for sure. And actually, Candy Lee, talking about brackets, Candy Lee always has a good bracket because she picks mascots, I feel. so. That's my <laughs> hey, I went safe this year. I just went with all the number ones. I'm picking Gonzaga, the Zags to take Arizona uh, by one point. So that's I'm playing it safe this year. <laughs> I, I like taking challenges, but this year I said, yeah, I'll just go with the ones. No, um, right. <laughs> you know, one thing I, 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 I want to uh, mention again, uh, we're going to integrate some of your work during this program today so people can get an idea of, of Ball 603. Uh, uh, I know we do a podcast version of the show, so uh, people can't see, obviously, that, but we'll, be we'll tell them where to go to see some of that work, and especially uh, the, the work you did for the uh, tournaments uh, for the state. Uh, go to uh, ball603.com. That's They'll see good samples of both the... Uh, action shots and also the video which I, I thought was great the coverage you did of all the tournament games that we were at and uh and the other thing that uh, obviously i was going to say if you had any you know, we do a thing at the end of our show called the two minute drill if there's anything you'd like to tell people about especially that magazine this is your time to do it man um yeah no i mean i think that with all of our um social media entities follow those i think that instagram is kind of the space that we're um probably the most excited about uh, we get tons of interaction with the actual with the players themselves and you know the demographic that we're hitting for there is is you know 18 to 30 year olds um, and that's really the space that we're having the most fun with um, so you know definitely follow us there I think that we do some cool things on there um, as well as you know we're on, on all the other social medias Facebook and Instagram and, and YouTube um, but we're also looking to really grow our web store um, we're just uh, launching that with the championship you know, we're calling them title T-shirts where it's, you know, each team's represented by that and it has their playoff results on the back, um, you know, with the championship uh, on the front. And, you know, we're going to do different creative things like that. And, you know, we want to we want to showcase different teams and different players um, in, in apparel, you know, stuff that nobody's really doing. So just, you know, kind of be following that. We'll put all those things out on our social media accounts. But, um, you know, we think that that's that's a good way for us to, you know, grow our brand and also, you know, monetize something that doesn't require tons of advertisements you know within the actual productions themselves um which i understand that's kind of the industry uh standard right now for the business model of it all uh, but we're hoping to not you know ha have to inundate people maybe with with sponsorships and things like that so maybe that things like shirt sales and the magazines and some mm -hmm. of these other things we have planned could kind of help subsidize our coverage because we you know the coverage is really where we want to be and just this other stuff could help us uh you know make that all possible and make it grow well I'm, I'm happy we get to bump into each other at the talent table as i like to call it over at unh <laughs> yeah. during the during the tournament uh and uh i i encourage people to go to ball603.com check out the work um and uh, i'm glad we got to get you on board today and i hope we can get you back in the future and we'll talk uh, more about the businesses in general and uh you know as it grows what 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 is in future for in the future for Ball 603 and, and the PAC Network. No, I appreciate that, Sherm and Sam and Bob for having me on. Uh, if there's anything you guys need from us, let us know. We're, we're here to help. So um, we'll definitely be sure to make sure you guys get the footage you need. Well, we appreciate that too. Well, on behalf of our special guest today, KJ Cardinal from, again, ball603.com. And also you can check out the uh, PAC Network and that's pacnetwork.com, correct, right, KJ? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Well, I'm Sherm Chester for Sam Bruno, inviting you to join us for our next edition of the Seacoast Sports Forum.
Be sure to subscribe to Exeter TV on YouTube and hit the bell to get notified about new episodes of the Seco Sports Forum and other local content. Follow the Sports Forum team behind the scenes on our Facebook and Twitter pages and send us your game footage and photos to our email. That's secosportsforum.extv at gmail.com. This is Sherm Chester inviting you to join us for the next edition of the Seco Sports Forum. Oh,